In this video, we are going to talk about HOA communities in Florida. There's a lot of pros, there's a lot of cons, and a lot of things you probably want to understand before you jump into it or decide maybe that you do or that you don't. Because a lot of people, I think, off the bat would just say yes or no, but there's some details to consider. If you're looking to move to the area, I am a realtor here in the Sarasota and surrounding areas. My information will be in the description box below. An HOA is actually a homeowners association and that comes with a lot of planned communities in the area. Florida definitely has a lot of HOA communities, gated communities, condos, townhomes, you name it. And we really didn't want to be in an HOA when we first moved down from Wisconsin to Altamont Springs and we ended up moving to a condo. The main reason for us not wanting an HOA is because we didn't understand why do you wanna pay 200, 300, 500 dollars a month for being part of an HOA community. Like to us, that was just kind of like wasting money. <laughs> but in condos in specific, you do get like for us, our water was covered. We were in a gated community. And with condos period, you do have to pay that HOA. It's just whether it's $100 a month or $500 a month. So you don't really get an option. So that's why we ended up in a condo association or homeowners association in the Altamont Springs area. You're not gonna find a condo that doesn't have an HOA. I think when you start talking about houses, it's a little bit of a different animal. A lot of HOAs, it really depends on the community and on the company or management company that you're using. A lot of them do include mowing your lawn or taking care of the plants, spraying, trees. Spraying, spraying for weeds, yes. bugs. So basically you don't have to worry about anything with HOAs like that, but then they do come in a little more pricey. There are also HOAs that can be like $20, $25 a month, especially here in Venice, Florida. They don't include anything. They basically are for you to be part of that community, to feel like you're part of a planned community, but you're not going to have anything included other than them being deed restricted, meaning that most of them you can't just do whatever you want to your house. You do have to go through the HOA to get it approved. One other really big thing to consider with an HOA is amenities. So some of the things that you might get in an HOA could include a pool, you might get a fitness center. So usually there's some sort of like a meeting room or whatever that you can rent. Tennis courts. Tennis courts, basketball courts. There is, it just depends on how much you're paying basically for your HOA. The lower HOAs typically don't include anything. They might have a pool and like a meeting area and that's it. The Higher HOAs like Welland Park, for example, their HOAs are higher, but they also have basketball courts, tennis courts, a pool that's like a resort it's style. It's like a water pool. park almost, <laughs> yes. some of them, yeah. Yes. I've seen some with dog parks too, like yes. a little dog, which is really nice if you are a dog owner. So, you know, not always, you know, HOA equals bad for dogs. Sometimes HOA can be great if you're a, if a dog owner. We've noticed newer communities that are being built have that space for a dog. A lot of the higher price HOAs also have like activity Activities, mainly activities for older adults. They'll have like fitness classes or just like things to get out and move around. Yeah, I've seen like yoga, painting classes. Yes. If you're coming down to Florida re to retire or just you want to be in a community where you can get to know the neighbors, things like that can be nice and it gives you something to do, something to look forward to. Every week you kind of have things that you can try out that maybe you aren't used to or maybe if you're into the activities that you know that they have going on, well then boom, you got us set time and day with a whole bunch of people that you can meet up with and do something that you love. But don't feel like you have to be in an HOA community in order to meet people because it is really easy to meet people and make friends here. Especially if you just go downtown and go like play tennis or basketball or just walk around downtown. People will typically say hi, how are you? Like with us, with our dog, like she always gets all the attention yeah. and people just like start talking to, to us. And if you're new to the channel, she's referring to the area we're in, which is Venice, Florida. Florida. One other thing to consider too is even like in that downtown area, there's like a tennis court area that's got like, I don't know, eight tennis courts and you'll see a ton of people out there meeting each other, getting to know each other, coming back every single morning or, you know, maybe every weekend. And since almost everyone's not from here, you'll get to meet a lot of people from across the country, maybe some people from Canada or even other countries. To give you kind of an idea of some of the things an HOA might cover, like we talked lawn maintenance. A lot of times when you drive in, there's gonna be a gate and maybe some fancy sign or a waterfall or something like that that covers it. Sometimes there's gonna be street lights in your neighborhood, there's sidewalks, there could be things like potentially your water is covered, potentially not, cable I've seen included, 
electric no i don't think i've ever seen that cable and water are mainly for condos or maybe like townhomes not for single family homes should have mentioned this with the condos almost always and, and sometimes also with houses and townhomes it'll cover like exterior maintenance and we're not talking just like lawn maintenance we're talking like the roof the the walls on the outside the insides on um, most places is, that's all you that's for you to handle with a condo you own all the inside walls everything that's inside that's your responsibility the outside maintenance and painting the walls outside stuff like that that is the hoa's responsibility i don't know if i've seen that with any houses for the outside townhomes potentially you know if it's like side by side so just something to keep in mind that you know yes you're paying a little more maybe you know you're saying in, in like when in our condo it was like 300 bucks a month but it included the water. You never have to worry if a storm comes through and rips off the roof, like it's gonna be covered. That being said, before we get into restrictions with houses, I think that's one thing we need to talk about, assessments. A lot of people don't like HOA communities because of the assessments. It can be a surprise to you, the homeowner, and then you're stuck with a bill that you have to pay. Sometimes like it, can be like, okay, you owe us this much now, or they can be like, you can build it into your payments and you know, we'll work with you kind of thing. They don't always do them unless they're planning on doing something for the community to make the community look better and therefore your house or properties will go up in value. And they can do them too if like say, I know some people that live near the beach or whatever and there's you know potential for hurricanes to go through if it damages the roof or damages something, they're gonna give you an assessment for that to get whatever needs to get repaired, Thanks. repaired. Talk to us about restrictions. Specifically, I, I think most importantly, is probably gonna be within a house, because within a condo, again, you don't get any say on the outside because they're handling it. Right, and in a condo, you already know what you're getting into because you know that condo's already painted, it's already built. With houses, a lot of the restrictions that come are going to be like the outside, how your house looks, the colors that your house has. Most HOAs will have like approved colors on file that you can paint your house that color. But if you're unsure, you'll have to contact your HOA to make sure that the color you're planning on painting your house, it's approved by the HOA because you don't wanna paint and then they come back at you and tell you, okay, you have to change the color because if that's the case, you will have to paint again the house. Then you also got, you know, other things on the outside too that they're gonna want looking a certain way. You know, obviously keep your lawn mode. Maybe some places are gonna be really picky about having weeds or too many weeds. The roof, the, you know, some of them have like that clay style looking roof and they want all the houses to be that way or all shingles. And I've even seen some that we've driven through which I'm not positive, but based on how it looked, it seemed like there's only certain like shrubs and trees and stuff that they wanted in there. So everything kind of looks similar, which is a pro and a con. It gives it a uniform look, mm -hmm. but at the same time, all the houses start to kind of look the same. So you might always pull into the wrong driveway when you first move in. Yeah, and I mean, that comes along with the plant community element to it. When they built the houses, they also put down all the lawn and all the flower beds and trees. So you are going to get stuck with the same kinds of trees or palm trees or flowers but if you do want to pull a tree out cut a tree down or change your exterior a little bit that's something you can do you just have to go through the HOA again try to get approved because if you don't they tell you that they'll like find you or whatever what do you think are the big pros and cons let's talk about that a little bit of an HOA versus not an HOA what I personally like and I think we both kind of agree on this it's the communities actually look more like what we are used to in Wisconsin. The houses, maybe not looking the same, but having the sidewalks, that's like a really nice touch. Yeah, because in Florida, in case you don't know, a lot of communities, suburbs, things like that, they don't have sidewalks, have sidewalks yeah. which shocked us when we first moved down. So for us, that was a big thing. Yes, yes. And the houses do look different. Like it can be a really nice house with no sidewalk, but you can still, at least for us, it's like, it almost bothers us that there is no sidewalk. But if you're used to that, like in a, if you're from a state or a city that, you know, sidewalks are almost non-existent like they are in Florida, you'll be fine. But I think one of the pros and what people really like about HOAs is that you know what you're gonna get. You know what you're getting into. You do have to keep up with your exterior of your house, but so does your neighbor. In a non-HOA community, you don't know what you're going to get. You might be keeping up with your exterior, but your neighbor might not. <laughs> yeah, and that can affect, obviously, the perception of the way the neighborhood looks, which also can affect the value of the homes. If you have a, a bunch of neighbors that have, you know, 
beat up cars with rust and you know they're just sitting in the yard and the lawn's really long then yeah the neighborhood value you know a lot of the homes in the area are going to go down in an HOA less likely to happen especially if the HOA is enforcing a lot of the codes but on the flip side with being in a non HOA you get more freedom mm -hmm. you don't have so many people telling you what to do and how it needs to look outside of maybe the city another thing too with HOAs is some of them will only let you park in the garage mm -hmm. overnight um, so that's something to look into as well and you do get all the documents like if you're looking into purchasing a home you'll get all those documents and they'll explain like what you're allowed to do and like what you have to worry and what you don't have to worry but i think that could be an annoyance having to pull in your car into the garage all the time and another thing with that too is that florida obviously doesn't have a basement so <laughs> people from the midwest especially like if you're coming to florida you kind of need that space or you might be thinking about using the garage. You're used to having a bare minimum. Yes. Yeah. Where are you going to put all your stuff that you probably should be getting? <laughs> yeah. And the, the cars being in the driveway, that actually makes me think of one other thing or a couple of other things. Number one, a lot of HOAs, they don't want any commercial vehicles or any, you know, even if you have like a magnet car sign, if you have a business, a lot of them won't want that sitting in the driveway at certain times. You can maybe park on the street at certain times, but other times you can't. Maybe you could or could not have a basketball hoop. So there's just a lot of things that you got to consider. You definitely want to look into the details of each HOA, but there's a lot of factors to consider with that. So you do want to have an understanding of what, what it is that you want to out of a place and what is a really make or break thing for you. Another thing with HOA communities. A big thing. <laughs> I think for a lot of people, if, you, if yes. you are a pet person, especially dogs, if you have a dog, you do want to make sure, even if you are moving into a house, a single family home, you still have to make sure what kinds of breeds of pets they allow and then the weight limit because a lot of HOA communities have a hundred, like a hundred pound weight limit. So if your dog is under that, it's fine, but if it's over, that may be a problem. Handles are a lot more strict on what they allowed for a pet. A lot lower weight, mm -hmm. usually. I've and seen- Greeds, Greeds is a, a big yes. one. I've seen some condos where they say 40 and less. I have seen a few where it's up to 100, but that is extremely rare. Another thing to consider when moving down to Florida, it's the 55 plus age communities. What that means is like a lot of condos will only allow people that are 55 or more to purchase or rent in those condos and we also have a lot of like mobile homes they're kind of like manufactured homes yeah. most of those are going to be 55 plus if not all pretty sure all of them in venice are 55 plus we might have some in northport that are for younger families maybe some in englewood but in venice everything is 55 plus and i've heard some Things, I've heard stories from people of like, you can't even have like your grandkids come visit or stay overnight and things like that in some of them. So I think as far as how strict they are, those are things you want to consider as well. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, if it is a 55 and plus community, they probably want to keep overall Quiet that and quietness and that demographic there. You're probably allowed to maybe have someone visit in the afternoon, but someone starts staying overnight too many nights, that might cause a ruckus. And again, that's all going to come in with your HOA documents to what you can and cannot do. And one thing to keep in mind with all this HOA stuff is a good realtor should be doing their due diligence, getting the documents for you. So before you ever put an offer in on something, you know exactly what you're getting into with the HOA. If you're looking to move to the area, make sure to contact me. I am a realtor and I can help you find a home here in beautiful Venice, Florida or surrounding areas. Information for that is in the description below. If the video was helpful, be sure to hit that like button. It helps us out a ton. Subscribe and turn on all notifications to catch the newest videos and live breezy.